Hey, 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 Med School Made Easy. Today we're going to talk about how to read a chest x-ray. A lot of different ways to do this. This is the way that I found to be the most easy and it's a mnemonic which we love in Med School Made Easy. So what we're going to do is uh, A through G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, this is a pretty common way, all right? So A first is airway. Uh, airway, you're going to look right here and make sure your airway is midline. You don't have any tracheal deviation. You can see the airway nice and clear. There's no obstruction, no foreign bodies, etc. Next is B for bones. Bones, you're gonna look at your clavicles here as they come into the screen, make sure there's no fractures. <clears throat> make sure that your x-ray is not rotated, uh, right or left or up or down. Uh, I should mention too, before you read any x-ray, you wanna make sure that uh, it's the right patient, the right time and date, uh, and the right orientation for the x-ray that you wanna be looking at. Uh, completing out bones, you wanna look at <clears throat> your ribs. Of note, the ones you can see easier are the posterior sides of the ribs and these harder to see ones that wrap around the front that appear larger because of image distortion. Uh, that's the anterior portion of your ribs. Next will be C, which is cardiac. You want to look at your cardiac silhouette. Make sure it's not super enlarged, like in a cardiac or a, excuse me, congestive heart failure patient, where it's over half the width of the patient's chest cavity. Make sure there's no pneumopericardium or striping the pericardium. After C comes D. D, delta, that's diaphragms. You want to look at your costophrenic angles. Make sure there's no blunting or deep sulcus signs. Uh, in this case, and also a complete chest x-ray should include both costophrenic angles like this one does here. There's no fluid collections here. It's a nice sharp angle, but it's not super deep, which would be like an anterior uh, pneumothorax. After D comes E, echo. Uh, that would be you're looking for extra things. E is for extra. You're looking for an ET tube, an NG tube, a PIC line, a central line, foreign bodies of which this patient in this picture does not have any. After E comes F for fields. This is where you want to look at the actual lung fields, looking for focal consolidations, um, contusions, pneumothoraces, etc. And last, G, uh, golf. That's for the gastric air bubble, which you can actually see really well here in this patient. This patient might have some sort of ileus or obstruction. They might need an NG tube because they have a pretty big gastric air bubble. Or they could have just eaten or swallowed some air. This could also be colon, it could also be air under the diaphragm, but uh, in this typical uh, pattern, that's gonna be your gastric air bubble. Of note, if you have a large similar air bubble over here, it could be the colon, which has a well-named uh, sign called Kyladidis sign. Sometimes it confuses people in thinking that there's free air under the diaphragm, which would be concerning for perforation. So again, A through G, you do airway, bones, cardiac silhouette, check your diaphragm, Look for extra things, extra tubes, lines, devices. Look at your lung fields. And last thing, look at your stomach. And that's A through G, how you read a chest x-ray. Thanks.